startup that's trying to redirect sunlight using mirrored satellites to light up parts of the Earth where it's dark out. Sort of like an inverse Mr. Burns situation on The Simpsons when he was trying to block out the sunlight. It's causing kind of a stir on the Twitters, or the, the X. The commotion I'm concerned about is where optical science is being misunderstood. Specifically, this post that I replied to that was talking about the inverse square law. And I'm glad people know about what that is, but you should know what that is if you're gonna quote it. This guy is saying that this idea is infeasible because of inverse square law because he says that it states that the light intensity decreases with the square of the distance from the source. He's saying, oh, if you use any sort of optics up in the sky, by the time it gets to the earth, it's going to be so dim, it won't matter. But this is an incorrect interpretation of the inverse square law. So if you go to Google, you'll see what this person said repeated and it, that doesn't mean that it's right <laughs> i'm going to explain what's going on but you're gonna to have to bear with me because we're going to go into understanding units of light and normally when one of my colleagues tries to explain to a group of other engineers this part of what we do i'm like great you just you just lost everybody in the room they're not gonna learn anything now. But this is one of those things where we actually have to learn about the units. So let's use this diagram, even though it's not correctly labeled, to kind of understand what this guy is trying to say. So we got a point source here. That means a light source that has light rays coming out evenly in all directions. And if you measure how many rays of light we have at this surface, this distance away from the source, we'll say it's, we got five rays of light over this tiny little postage stamp thing here. Now, as we go out further in distance, then that area that those five rays are going to fit inside is gonna be bigger. So the number of rays divided by the area become smaller. But intensity isn't number of rays divided by area. At least it's not anymore. If we refer to my textbook, copyrighted in 2002, had this note on the page about the inverse square law and it said in the past generally physicists would use the word intensity to mean flow of energy per unit area per unit time. But we've changed our minds and now we use the word irradiance. Why is that? Well because intensity, radiant intensity and luminous intensity they mean something else. They are divided by a steradian. So instead of dividing it by, like here you might have one square meter, one square meter. Here you might have four square meters. Instead, if you're going with actual radiant intensity, you're dividing by a steradian, which doesn't change as you move out. It expands along with those rays expanding in space. So if in intensity you measure five here, it's gonna be five here, it's gonna be five here. It doesn't change because the thing you're dividing it by is the same. It's only when you're talking about a different unit, irradiance, where you're actually dividing by like square meter, say, which does change as you go through space. So that's one thing, okay? So this should not say intensity, this should say irradiance, that changes. And maybe you're thinking, well, what does it matter what you call it? It's still less light, Aaron. Less, so we're talking about irradiance. Okay, but also this example is with a point source. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that point sources are theoretical constructs that don't actually exist in reality and therefore explaining things like <gasps> inverse square law. But isn't the sun a point source? Yeah, kind of, but it still doesn't matter. See, people imagine the sun and the earth like this. And if that were true, then yeah, we'd be getting rays that hit here at this angle and this angle and then straight at us, all these different angles. But we're much further away than that. We are actually more like over here. So the rays that make it from the sun all the way to the earth are actually gonna be all parallel. Doop. We'll see that the rays come here and here and here. You're gonna have three over this surface area and it's gonna be the same surface area it subtends here. Doesn't change. So it's the same density, pretty much. So that also means that if you have a satellite 
that's a flat mirror. Then you're gonna have parallel rays hitting that. And then they're still gonna be parallel when they go to the earth down here. They're not gonna be diverging. Not noticeably, at least, and that's what matters because we're talking about how many rays over a surface area. If it diverges, then there's going to be less rays over that surface area. There's going to be less sunlight power over a surface area. Another thing to keep in mind is that's only if you're not concentrating the light with multiple facets of a giant reflector, which is kind of what they're doing. So if that's happening, then you would actually have the opposite of diverging light, you'd have converging light, which means you could have more rays per surface area down here than you have up here. We can look at this yet another way if you still are like, no, Aaron, the sun is basically a point source, so let's do the inverse square law math. Okay, let's use this formula. We'll say that we have 100, we won't label it, just 100 units of intensity, which should be a radius. And those 100 units are going to hit the satellite at a distance from the sun of 94 million miles. This side of the equation will look like 100 times 94 million squared. Now to see the distance of those 100 units of intensity between the satellite and when it gets to Earth, we're going to solve for this intensity too. But then the distance from this distance to this distance is only gonna be maybe 100 miles because these are low earth orbit satellites. So distance two squared, that variable, is going to be 94,100,000 squared. And so if I solve for intensity two by dividing that 94,100,000 squared into this side, then we get 99.9997. 8, 7, 2, 3, 4, 3, 8. Out of 100 that we had at the satellite mirror. That's how much we'll have actually on the ground. So we're not, we're not losing that much because it's not spreading out that much. Now, if this weren't a specular reflector, if it were a mirror finish, if it were like a very reflective piece of white something, then that would be spreading out in a whole bunch of different directions and then that would change things. But that's not what we're talking about here. It's taking almost parallel rays of light and making them almost parallel somewhere else. So yeah, it's not out of the realm of possibility and they've already demonstrated it with some hot air balloons. Look, that's a picture of it. Isn't that crazy? So that, and then also just keep in mind uh, inverse square law doesn't apply to radiant intensity or luminous intensity. Those divide by steradians. That changes with you as you go out in space. And it should be irradiance or illuminance. Those things are units where it's divided by square meters or something like that. Do we got it? Or did I lose yet? Did I lose? I think I might have lost some people. <laughs> If I need to re-explain that in a simpler way, let me know.